have like a little fireside chat. If, uh, if you want to ask me any questions, put it in writing. <laughs> I'll get back to you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, uh, you have to admit that this is a subjective uh, interpretation, yes? So things are happening, but they're being interpreted. Yeah. And so that would sort of imply that this is dreaming in a way, yeah? In other words, there's no reality that can... Uh, lay itself on you, you give everything all the meaning it has. So, yeah. So like the Course in Miracles would say, because uh, we believe we're perceiving a real thing. And they would say it's a projection, then a perception. So the dreaming would be the projection. And then the dreaming as the dreamt perceives it and obviously takes it to be real. Yeah. Now, is it real? No, it's appearing to be real to the dreamt. Yes. So we're the dreaming, and in a sense, in this, in the dreaming, we seem to be identified as the dreamt. As soon as we're identified as the dreamt, what we are, what we're perceiving is seen to be real. Yeah. We think this is a real place full of real things, and time is real, and all this. Yes. But the whole nexus of it all is based on us, as the dreaming. Yeah. Now. I've learned in this topic, it doesn't do any good to talk to the dreaming while it's in the act of being identified as the dreamt. Yeah. So when you try to explain its own action of dreaming and it, that explanation is claimed by the dreamt, it doesn't go anywhere. The dreamt now thinks it's dreaming. Yeah. And then, and then obviously it goes off on, I should have like 50 babes, you know, perfect joints, always, everything goes great, you know. You, that's what I would assume as the dreamt if I was dreaming, everything would be working out for me, not so much for you maybe, but for me. So, so, <laughs> so, so I've learned not to talk to you about what you are. It doesn't go anywhere. What I've learned is to talk to what you are about you. That goes somewhere, yeah? So here we are sitting, and in one appearance, it looks like we're here at this meeting, and the starting and end point is Paul as this historical action figure, yeah? I don't believe that to be the, the truth, yeah? And all the while this is appearing, there's that which always is, let's say. So... I've realized through my own observation, sitting in this position many times and being in position where you are a few times in the early days, that to talk to you, you as you're taking yourself to be, about what you are is actually a deterrent to the recognition of what you are. Because you can't recognize what you are. You get a sense of what you are by recognizing what you're not. Yeah, there isn't a, a special what you are that can recognize the what you are. It just doesn't work that way. But what you are can recognize what you're not or what it's not. It can. And it's constantly in that condition, basically. It's always available at all times because it's being what it is. So it can't be fooled by what it ain't. Yeah, it's being what it is, unless it's in cahoots with the dreaming, which in a way, while you're feeling that you're the dreamt, that's the dreaming being cahoots with the, the dreaming. Yeah, it's taking itself to be the dreamt. And that dreamt is meant to seemingly forget what it is so that it can appear to be the whole nexus, the whole alpha and the omega. So to try to work on that source code and convince this that it's not this and it's all there is is pointless. <laughs> it doesn't go. It hasn't gone anywhere. It does. It goes some places, but it doesn't. It's sort of like just. It's like a you know a dirt bike doing like wheelie things, spinning. It's just, it's just, yeah, there's a lot of sound and a lot of fury, but nothing's going on. Yeah. So I learned quickly. I did. 
I mean, we're not two levels below a coconut, you know? This can observe stuff. And so I observed how many of us have heard about what we are? Has it brought us any closer to it? <laughs> no. You know, in a way, it actually produced distance from it. Yeah. So I don't see any point, really, to, you know, to sit here and talk about, oh, you know what you are? You're all there is. You're all, you're just all, you're just consciousness and you're hearing it as Bill or Steve or Paul, it's, it just gets neutered immediately, yeah? Because the, the imagining oneself as being Bill has been on all fucking day. And not only that, when it's on, it says it's always been on since the day you were fucking born and it's gonna be on until you pass away. <laughs> yeah, this message can't withstand that barrage, yeah? Yeah. You'd have to be in a satsang 24 seven and hear in this say, you're not that, you're not that, you're not that, you're not that. And you would still be identified as you seeing you're not that, yeah? So you're not that would be going, I'm not that, I'm not that. It doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't. I'm just trying to save your time. It doesn't go anywhere. I don't care if there's pictures of saints and there's tulips and orchids and a loving gaze is boring a hole into your heart of all hearts and infusing a lighting of your fucking love, whatever. I don't care, yeah? Once you go home after a few days, it's gonna look like, you know, like, if I go to Thailand in a few days, it looks like Burlingame, yeah? Because I bring Burlingame with me, yeah? So this, this thing of trying to talk to us, or, all right, Paul, we're gonna go to a meeting and we're gonna talk about non-duality. That doesn't go anywhere. Let's go to a meeting and talk about duality because you are non-duality, yeah? Just like I used to do a talk at a bookstore not far from here every month until I lost interest, just faded away. But I remember they had tons of books. They were a spiritual bookstore. And one night, I think this was one of the clinches after the thing, we'd have, you know, hang around the front, and there was all these books that they'd gotten in, and there was one book, and it was consciousness, like 1,200 pages. <laughs> and I just said, why, you know? If you are consciousness, why would you need to fucking read about it? You, you know what I mean? It would be better to read about anything else, really. <laughs> you know, really. Magical realism would be better, fucking science fiction, anything. But to start reading about what you are as what you're not doesn't go any, it goes to 1,200 pages. That's where it goes. Then there would be consciousness, and then after a few, a year, consciousness <coughs> too. <laughs> there would be a new edition. Oh, we found out more about consciousness, let's add it on. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you are that which you're looking for. You are that which you're looking for. If you are that which you're looking for, it doesn't spur you to study what you are. It may spur you on to study about what you're not because you'll see the biggest player here isn't what you are, it's what you're not. It's what you are disguised as what you're not. Yeah, it in, in a sense, it's playing God, yeah. The thought system is playing God. It's telling you how you were, how you're gonna be, how they were, how they're gonna be. And it seems like we have an affinity towards it. We seem to be listening. See, we're listening to it all times, a lot of times, but the basis is you gotta hear it because you're awake, yeah? So whatever comes into the field is gonna be noticed, but listening to it is a different story, yeah? Listening to it is a much different story. So, again, talking to you about what you are doesn't go anywhere, in my view. Talking to what you are about you goes somewhere. Yeah? Now, this is how I view a great famous statement by Hoang Po, which is, he says, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah? You can't use light to seek light. You can't use mind to seek mind. You can do it for eons, nothing's gonna happen, yeah? Now, if we were sitting here in a meeting and Hoang Po, AKA Paul, was here, and then Hoang Po's looking around at everyone, 
he doesn't see everyone as Bill, Z, Suzanne, or Paul. He sees everyone as the Buddha, and he's not talking to Bill, Steve, Susanna, Paul. He's trying to talk through, because at that point, Bill, Steve, Susanna, and Paul are the obscuration. It's that which wants to get clear is the obscuring agent. Yeah, you're wanting to become clear is the, is the obscuring agent. You can't get around it. Yeah, you're the observation that distorts what's observed. You observe this message from the observation. The observation rooted in identification distorts the fucking observed. Yeah, try to beat it. You know, you can't. The system can't get out of itself. We have a statement in recovery, self can't get out of self. Yeah. Where did that come from? It came from observation. People saw that they were trying so hard to get out of something and they realized they can't get out of that something as the something. So it comes to the next point. I must be in the act or there must be the act of being identified as one I'm not, yes? to have the Buddha look for the Buddha as Paul, yeah? It makes total sense for Paul if he's having a hard time after he goes through every therapy and psychology, starts looking for the Buddha through Buddhism. It makes total sense. Paul needs a fucking way of life. It's flipping out. I like to get some of the qualities they, they talk about Buddha having. Who knows what he had, you know? And so, all right, I need to have a vehicle to to change what I am into a better version mirroring the Buddha. It makes total sense if you are Paul. But if you're the Buddha, it's the biggest deterrent. So he's saying the Buddha, aka Paul, Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. He doesn't go on an 800 page fucking commentary. It was an invitation because the Buddha's there. It's always there. It's always available at all times. It's not like, okay, pry this fucking thing up. No, it's there. There's just our attention and, attention and interest is in the obscuring agent. So we don't realize we're the biggest dilemma. We're the biggest deterrent. You can see it in recovery. Your vested interest, like I used, when I got sober, I realized, you know, I could look at this room and I could turn my life over to almost, not every one of you, but a lot of you, and you do a better job with it than I did. Why is that? My own interest to promote Paul was what was defeating Paul. Yeah. Who would have thunk? You would think that if I was out to really promote myself, it would fucking work. But in a sense, the obsession with self yeah, and there's an obsession with self when you sign up for a two-year course about just, you know, studying the obsession with self. That's obsession with self. Yeah, so try, tell me when you get out of it. Tell me when that which is playing God gets out of playing God by trying to quit playing God. It doesn't. It goes on ad infinitum. This is the thing. This is the little spiritual speed bump everyone wants to start their journey after. Yeah, they don't see the bump. And then they, okay, it's fucking miles and miles of clear sailing. Yeah, but the shadow, the shadow that became the dominant point, right? Going over the speed bump is now following seemingly you all the way. You try to get out of it, you try to get into it, yeah? This is the message. The message is to pro hopefully provoke a rude awakening, a rude awakening, where you realize the futility of trying to use yourself to arrive at something else, yeah? You realize this isn't the vehicle. This has a speedometer. It always has to do with distance and time, yeah? It doesn't get what's always here at all times. It doesn't notice it, doesn't pick it up. Yeah, it doesn't. And it's the bottom source code of this system of self is it runs into self can't get out of self. 
It just doesn't get it. What happens is it tries to break through self as self, pulls back, and after a while just gets another vehicle thinking this is going to get through the wall, and it's just self, can't get out of self. I mean, I swear, I shot tons of cocaine under that delusion. It got to such a point, I couldn't get out of it. I figured it's got to give the last second before the body dies. There's got to be a point where I'll be there and self won't be there. And I did. I actually try to provoke overdoses. I swear to God. And, and I would, and you'd be, and I was, it didn't work. <laughs> self can't get out of self. It's just that freaking system. And it's going to keep trying. You're not going to convince the system to give this up. It, you're not. Some people get married six times. You know? <laughs> just, there's a, there's a, a flaw in the system that you are being run by. And that flaw brings us always to that conclusion. I can't get out of me as me. And yet I want to terribly. I want to feel better. I want it to be better. I want to forget shit that I'm not forgetting. I want to remember shit that I thought happened that was pretty nice. I constantly want to feel, change how I'm feeling, how I'm thinking. It's just a fucking urge. Urge, and you can capture it with, yes, brother, the problem is self can't get out of self. So the rude awakening is you see the futility of using yourself to try to find what you are. And in that, and I swear, when the engine of seeking actually shuts off, I don't mean idling, because now there's sophisticated non-seeking called non-duality. You can hear the fucking hum of the engine. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to be a non I'm going to be a self as a non-self. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very subtle, but you can hear it easily. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how slick it is, no matter how sophisticated it becomes, no matter how many add-ons you put to it, like lots of massages, whatever like this, it's gonna run into that one source code. Self can't get out of self. So where is the relief? Well. The relief is seeing you're not in self, really. The assumption that spurs all this drive to get out is the fact that you're in something that you're not in. So let's just question that. Let's just question, am I in that which I want to get out of all fucking day? Am I actually in it? If you're not, what happens? You're wanting to get out of what you're not in will fucking decrease unbelievably to the point where there'll be no more efforting to get out of what you can't be in. <laughs> Just done. It's the most incredible energetic mm, efficiency because you don't spend any time looking for what can't be found. You just don't. Yeah, You do not waste any more time. You do not believe that you're out of the moment and you try to get into the moment and you do not have a belief that you're in self and you really want to fucking get out of it, yeah? You've seen the futility of both of those and what happens, you're now established, yeah? In a reliable condition. You are what you've been looking for, yeah? The seeker is the sort. And in a weird way, like they say, the greatest escape is no escape at all. The wisdom of no escape is there's nowhere to escape from. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. And if you're onto something, it should inform you through all the layers of coconutness that you may be in, being two levels below a coconut, that, that <laughs> it's the last answer because you haven't sought for an answer in this topic for 20 freaking years. Yeah. To the point that what most people call spirituality, you see it as a fucking wild goose chase. Really, I think it's all it is is trying to refine the emotional, physical, uh, mental 
action figure, really. We tag it spirituality, but if you felt content and satisfied, you wouldn't be fucking sitting for 13 hours a day meditating. You wouldn't. You'd lay down after about four minutes. <laughs> you would. The easiest, softer way would be, fuck this, just lay down. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, now is it going to be a lot of fireworks no probably not you, if you want fireworks go to the peruvian amazon you know fucking do some ayahuasca you know get a, the venomous sting of a wasp at the same time and fucking <laughs> whatever you know fucking freeze your gonads and then you'll you'll shock yourself into some condition but you know what if you're there this idea that it's you there is going to arise yeah and if you don't see it you'll be looking from it yes i've met some of the people the highest people from doing talks if there's some weird thing in some cities i go to the ayahuasca community loves the message so these big people come and, you know, they're always there sooner or later after the fucking trip. Yeah. The arising of what you're not is so fast in time. I don't think any process is going to put you before it. Yeah. It, you may have the event that you're before it, but when you come to, it will have you after again. It will. I've seen it tons of times. Now, does it mean that that mechanical move of the state stops? No, you just see through it. That's all it is. It doesn't change whatsoever. It keeps implying that you're there after the fact. Really, <laughs> that's what it does. It hopes that you're still fooled because when it arises now, it says it has a historical feeling. It says, I've been here all these years. And then obviously I'm going to be here after this meeting. It's all hearsay. It's all assumption. And what non-duality is, is a negation of all those false assumptions, really. It becomes the fact, not to. Yeah. And it allows you to see and put under suspicion all the assumed facts our whole life is based on and see they're, they're, they're not a solid flaw. They're made up. They're fucking paper thin. Yeah. And you don't need to be beholden by its dimension and it's the amount of windows it has. You're not in the fucking house you think you're in. Yeah? You're the light. You are beyond and before things. You outshine circumstances and situations. You outshine circumstances and situations. Yeah? Uh, there's no situation that can put out the light that you are. None. 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 Yes? The answers to all the shit that comes after is before all the shit. It is. The answer to all that all the shit that comes after is not in the after. It's before. It's what you are. Yeah? And we all have the appropriate response. You'll rest and you'll find rest here, finally. You know, you'll hear beautiful music and it'll be half a note will take you into it. You'll be available. You'll be available to life. You'll never get chipped. Yeah? You're going to be available. You're not out in the back 40 or a oh, I'm just lost. No, you're not. You've never not been here. You're always here. Yeah? Dreaming, sleeping, waking. Yeah? Let's be done with this shit. You know, there's so much stuff and is it, it's not serving you. That thing that has been propped up by it is old and over. Yeah? The thing is, what we're saying is the production of a sense of being the doer, the feeler, the seer, the taster, the thinker can only be contrived from the claiming of seeing, hearing, feeling, thinking. 
the verb of living, all, and we are a verb of living. We're not the one who's alive. We're in the, no one is outside the verb of this river, yeah? So here's this verbing going on. The mental state, the brain develops sufficiently to the point where it noticed all the verbing and claimed it to imply there's a noun, really. That's the basis of self-centeredness. Now you see everything as how it pertains to this assumed noun, all day, every day. You may be able to move one aperture a little, but then it calls again, but it's very, very defined. There's not much, yeah? There's not much give, yeah? Before is open and brilliant, but the, this is not much, yeah? And when you do get a condition, it's definitely, it's, it's apt to erode quickly. So there's tons of need for vigilance and maintenance and re-upping. It's, it's another form of slavery, really, I feel. Yeah? So that which comes after this idea of you is implied or assumed or insinuated that it's before. So now all the verbing, the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the tasting, the touching, is being claimed to imply the seer, the feeler, the hearer, the taster, the touching. Now there's tons of touching and seeing and hearing, but it always implies just one seer, one hearer, one toucher. Yes, this is the bondage of self. The bondage of self isn't a thing. It didn't happen. It's an activity. You're bound to the idea of being a historical self. You start from there, and then it drives you to want to get out of it as it, and it has you even more, yeah? Any acknowledgement of it by wanting to get out of it, getting away from it, gives it a reality it doesn't deserve. And then the, the before that we're wishing for is over here. It's the before. It's playing God with God. You see it, you see it. It's a rude awakening when you realize that your own efforts are the biggest obscuring agent, that your own fucking intentions are clouding the whole fucking thing up, yeah? What's the best one can do? Fucking sit back and have a pause, <laughs> you know what I mean? Get reconfigured. Now look for things you can find, you know, like your rain jacket or your phone or something like that or a nice meal. Yeah, I'm successful every day. <laughs> but I don't send this to find what it is. <laughs> it's already that. Why would I send this on that fucking... It's like sending... Yeah, it's like, you know, looking for a fucking chainsaw in a library. You know what I mean? Is that it's going to go out, it's going to shop in the wrong aisles. You, know? you are, I am, what we're looking for. The seeker is the sword. What's looking, what's looking is what you're looking for. Yeah, I thought I was looking for tons of shit. Well, St. Francis comes by and goes, hey, I know you're looking for tons of shit, but really, what's looking is what you're really looking for. Yes, you know, pet the little bird or something, go out. Yes, but fuck St. Francis, you know. Just keep believing your shit. And then we seek for dead masters because they, you know, they don't argue with you. <laughs> All right, what's looking is what you're looking for. How can you interpret that? any other way. So what I'm saying is, we're using what's looking to look for itself. How's that going? Well, let's put it this way. Are you, and it's not that you're not that you, are you using what's looking to look for itself? And don't you see the fundamental flaw, F-L-A-W, in that? Yeah. I can look for anything and everything that I'm not, but if I try to apply that to what I am, it doesn't work. I cannot use myself to find myself.
a lot of stuff gets becomes available to you. Peace, serenity, yeah. Intuitive thoughts, forewarning energetically, other things, tons of stuff come. Not as anything you coaxed into existence, but as possibilities that are impossible when you're trying to get them. Yeah. But when that's relieved, when you when you that's given up, then a lot of those possibilities that you wanted to get are readily available. Yeah. You're at peace. What? Yeah. I feel most people in spiritual practices, if they were content and satisfied, those practices would diminish quickly. Really, if you just felt okay, and I would say that's a nice starting point, an inherent okayness. I don't mean the physicalness or the mental. I'm talking about that which is always on, yeah? That must have some say in your life, has to. It's the, it's, it's, it's allowing everything to occur. <clears throat> yeah, well. I can go on and on. I can tell you how what we're not gets produced. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen the mechanical activity. And I've seen when it ends. I have. I've seen it's a finite activity. Yeah. When it stops, we don't. Yeah. So let's put the fucking horse in front of the car. Yeah. What we are outshines what we're not. Simple as that, yeah. So I saw it. I saw. Yeah. It's an activity, the conscious contact we all share. Yeah, we're all seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching right now. There's really no volition to it. Uh, you can hear it when people speak. They'll go, I didn't want to feel that, but that came after the feeling of it, yeah? So the consciousness is what's happening, yes? And then there's the idea of you that comes after the consciousness. And then the you, this idea, it comes from the seeing. The sense of being the seer comes from seeing. Without seeing, there is no seer, yeah? So the... The noun is derived by the claiming of the verb, yet in the interpretation we're listening to in our little radio station, the noun is put as a preceding of the verbs to the point you believe you're doing a lot of the shit you really have nothing to do with, to tell you the truth. Yeah? And so this story gets traction and gets reinforced all day. So all day when something's happening, seeing, there's just a, a lazy assumption you're the one that's seeing. Or when there's noticing of thinking, I'm the thinker. Or sometimes you're the thought about. So it feels like this renegade system is thinking about you way too much. You're not comfortable with that. You'd rather be thinking about others, yeah? But it's on your ass, your case. So what? Yeah. So this, the idea of you comes after consciousness, but is implied to be before consciousness. So now we all think we're conscious. Yeah. Now you may think that's a small thing. That's a huge thing. We are stepping over so many elephants in the spiritual room, you know, to go on our little path. Why not fucking stop and see that which I'm listening to, this narration, does it include verbs and nouns? Yes. <coughs> what non-duality is, is a negation of that. Non-duality is not two. So obviously noun, verb would be two, yes? 
So the whole narrative we're listening to all day that our life is fucking based on, yeah, is from the point of view of non-duality, not true. Subject, object, verb, noun, no go, not to, yeah? That's non-duality. Non-duality is not to. Not to the subject, object little role we play, not to. That's what it is. So non-duality is a fact that negates the assumed facts, our life, not our life, but the interpretation of life is based on, yeah? And we're being whacked around by the interpretation, but we, because, but the fucking bat is hollow. It doesn't have real legs to stand on. It's based on our believing it that makes it seem to be so. And it's because we believe it, these uncaused effects seem to have effects. Yes? We're dreaming. So, does in your head, does the noun come before the verb? Listen to it for two minutes. You don't have to sign up for a freaking retreat. Sit here for two minutes and see. Because you're listening quite a lot. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Seriously. So let's say, what are we really listening to? Not all the particulars. What's the fundamental theme? Everything is seen as it pertains to me. That's basically one of them. Yes? It's called self-centeredness. So the system is centered on self. And if self isn't true, then the system is fucking really, it's like a living museum of the international propaganda. <laughs> I knew I was going to use that today. <laughs> domestic version. We got the domestic version. But it travels wherever you go. <laughs> so let's get it down. So. Now, are we going to say there's no thoughts? No, just thinking, right? There's thoughts, yes? So let's not try to negate the verb because it's appearing, yeah? But is there any noun really to be found? Is there a, is there, is there a seer called Paul without seeing? Where would Paul arise from? Paul has to be made out of something. It doesn't stand on its own. When you were a baby, you had no idea you were John. You had no idea there was an other. You had no idea of tons of stuff. Yet you seemingly were alive. Didn't seem like you were necessarily... Your life didn't seem to be based on John because you didn't have any John and life was lifing. Yeah? So let's come on. Yeah? So the verbing is being used. It's claimed. Claimed. To, to say, all right, the verbing implies there's a noun. So the ver noun comes after the verbing, but then it's implied to be before. That's the bondage of self. I rest my case. Yeah? Why not start there? Really? See if that's true or not. If that's the and then see, all right, how many problems did I have today? But there was only one who had the problems, yeah? Why wouldn't you put attention there? You know, if there's 30 problems, but you're always the one there, it's sort of like if, you know, I'm at a lot of fires, I mean, I need help, I need some water, but when the fire's put out, maybe I should see, hey, I seem to be at a lot of fires. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the fire starter. I don't know. It could be. So you'll see it. You'll see the system of what you're not. That's all. You'll see it. Not intellectually. You'll see it. You'll see it from before. You will see it from before. And it tells you no matter how much it's implying to be before, it's after. It will be obvious. Yeah. And then maybe, just maybe, when there's relief, it will tell you why there wasn't relief. And you'll get to learn in your own little way the mechanism of what you're not. And see, see how it's manufactured and made, yeah? And see how you slip into the glove, yeah? Seemingly forget that your hand, live all the travails of the glove life, and everything the glove meets is always translated through the glove. Yeah. 
And then of course, oh, the gloves, it's the, the life of a glove sucks. So if, obviously the glove wants to get out of the glove. Whack. Yeah, you're more in than ever. You got to see why. See the manufacturing of the glove. There is no fucking glove. It's you. It's not the circumstances that have you in fear. It's in fear that's interpreting the circumstances. That's where power lies. Power lies before. And how you, how, you, how you access it is through powerlessness, through a fucking, an admittance that you can't pull this place off. Yeah. And then what happens? You experience power. Yeah. Yes, so. Oof. I don't want to go into much detail. That's not really tonight. I've done it thousands of times. Go to the website. I swear. Uh, there's gold in this message. That's all I can say. There's gold in this message. If you can't get out of something, see that you're not that that can't get out of something. Just step back instead of constantly trying to step forward. Step back. Ask yourself, you know, who is it that's flipping out about next week? It's not you. Who is it that thinks it's getting closer to, to the truth? It's not you. Yeah. You're before. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I've done seemingly some heinous fucking things. Nothing's left a mark in what I am. Nothing. Nothing. It's untouchable. Yes? The dreaming only has effects in the dreaming. It leaves no, no effect on what is. Not one little nothing. I've gone out. I've gone out and come back. And I'll tell you, man, they have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> <laughs> when this is over it'll be like it never fucking happened because it hasn't yeah so our newest book let's start selling stuff <laughs> our newest book is uh is a little joke on a famous yoga mantra called uh i forgot the title of it but it was in a yoga studio I did a talk in, and it says, gone, 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 to the other shore. The other shore means like awakening, whatever, you know, samadhi, satori, whatever, yeah? So gone, 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 to the other shore, upon arriving at the other shore, on having never left. Mm, it's beautiful, eh? So gone, 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 to the other shore, you arrive at the other shore, realizing, what? You never left. So, did you actually go, go, go? <laughs> and is the other shore another shore? No. While you were going, it was gone, gone, going, going, going. Other shore, other shore, other shore. Left this shore, this shore, this shore, other shore. Oh, finally reached my goal on, on, on having never left. What? <laughs> so your whole story's been negated completely. <laughs> <laughs> so at least cut out of two of the gods just have gone baby to the other shore if I feel like it <laughs> arriving at the other shore I know what's coming I'm having never left <laughs> that would be traveling lighter from the one shore to the other shore because you know you never left <laughs> you can't stop traveling I mean, the action figure's going, but at least you can wear it loosely, you know what I mean? Oh, I really want to arrive. I really, oh, 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 I've never left, yep, <laughs> once again. <laughs> Could you imagine if your day was based on that? On having never left instead of trying to arrive somewhere? Could you imagine if your day was based on, on having never left? <sighs> That is, that's a free sample of non-duality here, of having never left, yeah? 
your day would be interpreted differently. Or your listening to the interpretation would be much different. Yeah, let's put it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, I'm going to stop now, but I want to say something. Yeah. No, we'll keep it on. They can edit it. If you can't, if there's, if there's too much being identified as this in place, you got to go to the second card, which is surrender. Really, you have to do it. You've got to admit your inability to pull this place off. And in that admittance, ask for the help of a power greater than what you think you are, which is you in disguise anyway. <laughs> and then fucking walk around with that understanding throughout the day. Instead of, because obviously, if there's a lot of fear and anxiety being provoked all day, there must be a reliance on what you're not. That you feel you have no confidence in its ability to make it through a day. So you gotta, you know, you've gotta do a symbolic uh, switching of, of what you're writing, you know, just to, just to convince yourself in a weird way. All right, hey, this is a dead horse, I'm getting off it. I'll wait for a live one to come by. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep resuscitating this. Yeah, so Ramana Maharshi said beautifully, he said, there's only two ways. It's either you do this, you surrender because you're of your inability, your your unmanage, your unmanageability. Sort of for me, in AA, it was like I realized I'm not managerial quality. Yeah, so surrender. I was convinced of that, and that was the springboard of surrender, to the point where it surrendered. Yeah, it doesn't come up for debate. It does. It doesn't fucking come up because situations change. It doesn't. The, the, the degree of heat in a situation doesn't cause it to dismiss. Because that's just how this place gets us. It says, oh yeah, that, but this is a bigger that. Yeah? No. The surrender is, your, it's not up for debate. You're not reviewing it every year. You're under... And you have the eyes to see from your own observation it has worked for 30 something years. It's time, it's time to give up that which is living in doubt cons completely. Because it's never going to be convinced. Never. If it's not convinced now, after 30 years of living, it's never going to be convinced. You've got to take the second point and see you're not that. You're not that that's too afraid to surrender. You're not that. Surrender that. Surrender that which can't surrender, please. Because it's not serving us. It's not serving us one bit. And it's withholding us to, from other people and life. Yeah. The Course of Miracles captures it beautifully. It says, you and I are the dreaming of the dream. I don't like the word dream, because that sounds like a noun, but you and I are the dreaming of the dreaming, and we're dreaming ourselves out of it, and as we do, the dreaming will get happier. That's sort of what, that's the view that you get through surrender. You do. Yeah, you can see beyond the present tense circumstances and situations. You can see from before the present tense circumstance situations. Yeah? There's an assurance that's not provoked by solidity. Yeah? It's brought to this place from what we are. Yeah? I think it robs us a lot. A lot of people I really care about, it robs us of a peace that's available at all times because we're beholden to circumstances and situations and it's provoked so much anxiety. It's become like a drug, really. You know, we're addicted to this idea of self. What we would be if without that, yeah? We're afraid to find out, I guess. I don't know. 
I know I won't put this on the talk, but I just wanted to express it. Because, yeah, non-duality is great, but if you're really, and I don't know, you know, if you're really taking yourself to be this, non-duality ain't the shop, shop you should be shopping in. You should be fucking looking at surrender, really. You should take an honest appraisal that you're outmatched here and ask for whatever you think is that spirit to fucking come and help you. Yeah, the non-duality won't do that for the action figure. The non-duality is negating the actually importance of the action figure. Yeah? So, I mean, I really wish there was more warnings when it comes to non-duality. Because it's so open now, a lot of people are hearing it. And the only way they can see non-duality as a skillful means to make them feel better. And I don't see it's good at that. I'd much rather, there's much better skillful means for the action figure here than non-duality. I think non-duality is a loser when it comes to, you know, <laughs> making it do tricks for you. I do. I just think it's a fact. Yeah. And if that works for you, far out. But if you're obsessed or up the ass of self, you got to get some divine pathologist. You, know? <laughs> you need to get pulled out. You do. You do. And then you've got to, you know, ask, pray for the ability to be convinced. Because all of us, there's been, you know, we're, we all, f in, the, in the addiction to self, we're all the doubting Thomases, yeah? It doesn't matter how many demonstrations, the next little flurry of anxiety captures our attention and interest, and we think it's fucking the end of days, yeah? So it's not going to be about a scale being tipped. Obviously, we have seen something works, and yet it hasn't tipped the scale. So we've got to fucking see another. We've got to see we're not that which can never be convinced, really. Stop wasting time trying to convince that which that can't be convinced. If you're programmed to see the worst in fucking things, then fucking, you know, let's, not, just, let's do a bypass. Like they call spiritual bypass as a weird thing. It's the fucking greatest move of all. Fucking bypass all spirituality. Bypass it all. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I the, the head that I, we will edit this because I'm talking. The head that I hear, yes. Hasn't changed any stripes whatsoever. They've just faded out. Yeah. And because of its, it, it's been shown to itself, its ridiculousness that doesn't even get off the ground a lot anymore. It's sort of, you know, it just dies in midair because it's so fucking absurd. Yeah. But, but the thing is, to, what really, really can help you is, is if you see those thoughts as not your thoughts. Yeah? And its plans are not for you. Its plans are for itself. Yeah? If you don't see, if, you, if you're still in the relationship or under the relationship that these are your thoughts, and you've been very intimate with them for 50, 60 years, it's going to be very difficult to break away. Yes? You have to see them as not yours. At least call them alcoholic thoughts or addictive thoughts. Get them a little bit out there. And then once you recognize one, you'll recognize them all from the exact same source. They're international propaganda. Yeah. And you're the museum, really. <laughs> because we've been off, we've been calcified. We're not even fucking living. Yeah. We're so afraid of losing life, we're not even in it. Really. Whatever. Sorry, you got here late, eh? I had other engagement and I just went from there to here. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. 
I just discovered you this morning or last night. Oh, just discovered me this morning. <laughs> I know. And you're late for our first date? <laughs> <laughs> Typical woman, right? Uh, not looking good. <laughs> no. no, no, hey, do you live near here? No, in Novato. It's a no way. The traffic is jammed. Oh, in Novato. Yeah. I live in Novato. Oh, wow. You want me to give you a ride? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we can't have the talk. I don't know if I trust you. You were late here. Oh, I don't want to get you home late. Because I had other engagements, and I left early to be here. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, we have two talks a week. We have one in when? Saturday, every Saturday in when? Marin City at eleven fifteen. And sometimes we have it at the house in Novato on Saturday. So if you go to house? the website where I live. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I live in a house. <laughs> you sure not in a tent, huh? Not in a tent. Oh, no, I have yeah. a couple of tents. <laughs> I have a tent, but I'm not living there now. I've oh. upgraded. But yeah, we have the meetings every week. I'm so happy. Did you? And we also go into the city. So we'll take you there if you want. Yeah, if I can catch a ride for that. We'll get you a ride because we're, we're going to go there tomorrow night. You said you're lady. No. No. Not Could now. You? I was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you keep saying we, we. Oh, well, it's a, it's a large group. Uh, Okay, well, I'll, I'll, gonna, I'll give you my number, and if you want to come, call us, because yes. we go into the city. Or well, somebody will, Keith or someone, yeah, we have, we'll get you right. I just by accident saw your name, and I just had to investigate, who is this guy? By accident? Yeah. Where was it, in the post office? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. You were excited, eh? Yeah, you're great. so wild. I fell in love with you. What? You're so wild. I fell in love with you. Oh, great. You see, you <laughs> I, I heard it. I wanted to hear it I twice. <laughs> well, that will wear that will wear out. Uh, but, but, no, this is good. Yeah, I'm right. If you beat yeah. me out. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really good. It, it shows me that. Any anyone that has the wisdom can share it, and you're doing that, and I honor that. Thank you. <laughs> no, so I don't look special. <laughs> anyway, yes, thank you, honey. Yes, we try to keep it like that. Yeah, yeah. Specialness is a very small entrance. We like to keep it ordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yes. it doesn't seem to be any magical, mystical thing. It isn't. It's just the basic awakeness that we all are, but being awake to that idea, yeah, instead of being asleep to it, really. And then, uh, and then after, the, after the years of having it based that way, just sharing your observations and stuff, and to see really what you're not is the key. Yeah, we're not interested in trying to describe what we are, we're trying to describe what we're not so that we can see it, because I would say that the mental state is in the act of being identified as what you're not. Yeah. And uh, you can't break out of it as that because that would, be, that would be what you're not trying to get out of what you're not. So you have to see it for what you are, which is always available. Yeah. So that's what the message is in a sense. And then it hasn't changed in years because how it came down in me is it's pointless to move on from here unless this is seen because if it ain't you're going to be looking from the mistake that's all so we're just uh, describing the seeming mistake and it's only appearing to be so it's not so you have never never ever been what you're not you never have you've never lost what you are ever yeah it's impossible so that's a very very reassuring uh promoting of relaxation, a disarming message, where in, a, in truly in the sense that you and I are what we have been looking for. Yeah? Yeah. So, and we're more than happy to take you to the city or something. We'll drop you off and see how good you do. <laughs> <laughs> we have little, we have little, we have little tests. No, no, no. no. I, I would like to come to Nevada if you're doing something in Nevada. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes we will. Uh, it matters. Like twice a month we do it at the house. My girlfriend 
has kids, so when we have the kids, we can't have people over when it work. So yeah, but we have a website, and it'll always be uh, announced in the website zenbitchlap.com. Zenbitchlap.com. Zen bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bitch slap. <laughs> A female, not a woman. A female. So I guess that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, I'll just go to the website is uh, uh, functional. It'll just have the announcements of what's going on. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we can write yeah, this stuff down yeah, for you. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to go on any longer, I don't think, eh? Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, is it 7.30? It's uh, 8.30. Yeah, no, it's, it's over. Oh, 